Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 20, Thoughts. This episode is called Scars. So, another episode I love. Spoilers for anything MCU leading up to and including the episode. No spoilers for anything MCU that happened after this episode first premiered. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in to the episode. So, we see that, I want to say his name is Sam. Sam Koenig, you know, we see him waking up in the morning, and I admire Patton Oswalt for agreeing to just have his morning routine filmed. Like, I would be shocked if he did not sleep in Star Wars sheets in real life. And, let's see, the yeah, we see this is one year ago, and they talk about Theta Protocol, which, you know, yeah, that is the, the helicarrier that appeared at the very end of the second Avengers movie, which had come out by the time this episode first premiered, so... Yeah, I appreciate them trying to make that less ridiculous. I, yeah, they they put in the effort to try to make that seem less of a, yeah. I don't know if they, if I would necessarily say that they completely succeeded, even with the line, you know, it's very difficult to keeping a helicarrier under wraps. I do love that movie. But I'm not going to defend how ridiculous that twist is. And let's see. Yeah, you know, so um, Colson, you know, says, you know, let's put all the cards on the table. There don't need to be two different shields. We should be struggling together. And let's see the... Yeah, so Lincoln wakes up, and, you know, just the him waking up with a sort of shock, startle, you know, the electronics in the nearby area all, like, flicker on and off, which, yeah, that's, that's what he can do just, like, waking up. You know, if he, if he tried hard, he could cause severe problems. And, you know, Sky tries to reassure him, you know, the S.H.I.E.L.D. are the good guys. And, yeah, Reyna and, and Gordon, I, I quite appreciate this thing of, you know, now Reyna really is using her powers to help people. You know, she reassures a, a parent of a, you know... If, uh, are they called Inhumans if they don't have their powers yet? Potential uh, Inhuman. And, yeah, she has seen the, the Kree stone, which we later see, you know, the agents do indeed have. S.H.I.E.L.D. does indeed have that. And, yeah, we're told, you know, Zabo talks about Reyna always wants something. She's very, you know, give a mouse a cookie and it'll last for a mile. And... Let's see. I don't love using the, the idea of, you know, oh, you know, when she was growing up, she was, like, unhoused, and then she selfishly wanted fresh pastries for free and, you know, better materials for... The clothes that she wouldn't have if people weren't taking pity on her. I, it, it's a very, very, like, capitalist idea of, of selfishness. How dare she not, you know, be able to pay for stuff. You know, I'm not saying, like, she does appear to be selfish, like, actually. But saying that, oh, you know, when she was you know, an orphan as a child, unhoused, you know, she wasn't happy with scraps. That does not really make you sound like you're being super reasonable in, in judging her. And, yeah, so 
Sky, May, and Coulson talk about Inhumans, and yeah, you can absolutely understand everyone's point of view. And yeah, the issue is brought up, you know, will there be a war between S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Inhumans? Which is one heck of a finale hook. There are, after this episode, there are two episodes left, and it's a two-parter, and both parts are called S.O.S. So, yeah, really, really excited to see how they finish that off. <laughs> and we get a Wizard of Oz reference. And... Let's see... Yeah, and, and, you know, Reyna warns, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming... You have to let me be the one to talk to them. If Jia Ying knows they're coming, if she talks to them, there will be war. And, you know, it's one of those, you know, Boy Who Cried Wolf scenarios. Reyna appears to have been telling the truth. You know, I, I would be shocked if there is not at least some war. Or, you know, certainly, even if all Reyna saw was... Even if she didn't see war, if she saw... In her vision, Jia Ying dropped the, the Terrigen Crystal and, you know, it killing, you know, <laughs> Jia Ying is like, let's hope you're one of us, you know. Yeah, you. it would be a reasonable supposition that that's going to lead to a war. And they do a great, the fact that we don't see it. We've seen, you know, it's not that they never show us Reyna's vision. Sometimes we're just told about what she saw. Sometimes we're shown this time they didn't show it, so we, the audience, are led to believe she's vying for power, you know. And, yeah, like, what would she say to S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, you know, she's... In the in earlier episodes, we've seen she is very manipulative. She's trying... She's always trying to, to create a situation that benefits her. And, you know, yeah, people she's worked with can die in front of her eyes. You know, Scorch killed that one um, centipede doctor, and she was like, didn't need her anymore, I don't care, you know. And, let's see. Yeah, even May says that it shouldn't be Coulson talking to the Inhumans. And... Yeah, Fitzsimmons talk about Grant, and Gemma straight up says, I was trying to, I failed, and I'm kicking myself over, you know, not being able to take him out. Where, you know, Fitz was like, you know, it's, it's okay, at least you didn't go through with it. You know, I wanted to as well, but, yeah. And, yeah, Mac resigns, which you can really completely understand, and, um, let's see, right, yeah, Zabo warns Jiaying of the Index, which, yeah, you can understand why she, uh, you know, yeah, why that really unsettles her. And I also, like, I really appreciate, I did not at all see coming that Jia Ying would try to provoke a war at the end of the episode, but it doesn't feel like a character assassination, you know, or even a character assassination frame-up. She's shown previously, you know, she does primarily care about the Inhumans, you know. She doesn't really trust anyone who isn't Inhuman. And... Yeah, I, I really appreciate, like, it doesn't feel like it's just out of nowhere, but it's also not, like, super obvious that that's what's going to happen. You know, if, if we knew that that's what she was going to, like, let's hypothetically say that Zabo was in place of Jai Ying, you know, it'd be like, okay, there's no way he's gonna, this is not gonna go well, you know, he's way too unpredictable. He, you know, he gets violent when it's, you know, he loses control, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, was that old? It looked old. And I, I appreciate, you know, Jia Ying expresses, you know, she still has a fondness 
for Zabo, you know, you are as bold as the day I met you, and, you know, stuff like that, you know, I don't get the sense that she's lying, you know, if, if she, yeah, the, the, you know, if she just wanted him away from her, she wouldn't be, like, lying to his face like that, you know, she might, like, behind his back, tell Gordon, teleport Zabo away, but I really don't get the sense that she lies to her loved ones. And, let's see, the, yeah, a really great twist that Kara was posing as May to get to Bobby. Yeah, very, very clever, and, yeah, really excited to see how that plays out. And, yeah, so Kara got Bobby to near Grant. And, let's see, the... Right, and, yeah, we, we thought that Gordon was had agreed with Reyna to, uh, to, to betray Jai Ying. You know, and and Reyna is like, you know, I hope you didn't put her to teleport her to somewhere too uncomfortable. I wouldn't want that, you know. And then Jia Ying walks in behind, and another woman who, you know, evidently has powers to prevent Reyna from from leaving. Kind of hoping we get to see what they are, um, but I appreciate keeping it, you know, just just hinting because. She does not look like she is even a little bit intimidated by Reyna, who, let's keep in mind, we have seen murder S.H.I.E.L.D. agents effortlessly, you know, so, yeah, the, the, this is not some, you know, nothing of a, and, and the Inhumans almost definitely know that, because that's why they got Reyna, you know, they, they teleported her to the afterlife where they were going to keep her, specifically so she didn't keep killing people and let's see the yeah so Jaying meets Gonzalez and sends Zabo and Sky out of of there and he hands Jaying this thing and you know just open it and we are like oh that's definitely there's something wrong here you know but she you know because this was the thing that he asked ah crap who was it it was one of the one of the yeah he asked someone you know did you bring the thing I you know the what did he call it a contingency plan or something you know and and she was like, you know, this was very last minute. You know, I almost wasn't able to, you know. So I don't think that it's just, I can imagine they put something with it. Um, I don't know if it's a tracking device or something, but it just, it doesn't quite feel. And yeah, you know, she she mentions that she knows about the index which yeah, I mean, it does. You do kind of get a vibe of like terrorist watch list, you know. Which I mean, I appreciate that there is some worth to that, but we know it has been, like, you know, there are there are people who have not been put on the terrorist watch list, even though they are terrorists, because it's politically inconvenient. You know, domestic terrorists have not been put on the on the watch list. Um, and, and I, it's been a while, but I feel like I heard once, um, um, I, f let's see, um, I, f I feel like I heard that there was someone put on the the list that really shouldn't have been where it was like a political um hmm, let's see yeah um and yeah you know Jai Ying explains you know it's just you're operating based on fear 
you know, you you think that you're you know you're putting you're you're discriminating against people who are just different. And let's see, yeah, um, you know, and and yeah, the the titular scars, you know, ref yeah, she has scars, and he compares his to hers, and she feels that's downright offensive. And, you know, she explains, so, you know, we made these crystals, you know, and we couldn't quite get the diviner metal out of there, which, you know, that's not a problem for us. But humans, on the other hand, and then she just drops the mic, I mean, the crystal, and holy crap, like, I just stunning. It, it really is, like, just, oh, this is, this is not good. And she does say, you know, let's hope you're one of us, which, you know, that is the kind of thing, like, if he, if he was actually an inhuman, you know, presumably he would work with, you know, yeah, with the other inhumans over the human since, you know, now he would have skin in the game, but, yeah, he, he, you know, turns into to stone as we've seen with others, and you know he manages to to get out the the gun, and then she grabs it and shoots herself twice to frame him, and even you know runs out says he sh he shot me you know, and we get the line this is war, and the post credit scene has Grant and Kara talk about you know Bobby and. You know, he says, you know, he explains about closure and says you have to dig in, which, I mean, last time he was get when he, when he was getting closure and he was like, you know, got to dig in, he was digging for a well so he could coerce a confession out of his brother. So I don't think that he just, you know, he says, he says dig in, do the work. I don't think he means just, like, I don't think he's talking about therapy. I think he has ill intent towards Bobby. So, yeah, really, really, like, very nicely done. The, the you know, really, I, I did not see coming at all that it would be Kara luring Bobby away like that. But, yeah, you know, like... All it means is at some point she she you know she got her hands on on a nano mask. Wait, or was she wearing it the whole time and it was off? Maybe, because they mentioned earlier in an earlier episode. You know, if you want to look like yourself, you can just turn it off. You know, so the yeah maybe that was that was it, and they didn't like check if she was still wearing one because that's her face. Why would she be wearing one? So just yeah, very clever. Uh, right, I I appreciate the detail that they can now scan. They can they can discover where Gordon teleports to because Mike Peterson's eye caught the the you know yeah saw the Hydra method for that and now they're using just very very clever and that brings so yeah so I'm to be trivia for this episode um, right helicarrier 64 which is featured here is the same one that appeared in both of the first two Avengers movies right and and uh, I didn't really I, I don't know why for some reason I did not um, really, in, in when I talked about the last episode in the last video on the show, I didn't really talk about, so yeah, you know, they sacrificed the bus. I quite appreciate, you know, I, I love when a show like this has, like, an established status quo and is willing to, like, really just throw it out the window like that. Um, and that was also, of course, you know, when we see the bus be destroyed, we're like, holy crap, you know, we, we think that the agents are still on board because they, you know, they rarely, they've never left the bus while it was in midair before like that. So, yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, but I'm to be trivia. The final exchange between Gonzalez and Jai Ying illustrates two competing philosophies, government control for perceived safety as espoused by Gonzalez versus individual freedom from intrusive governments as espoused by Jai Ying. And uh, yeah, the you know the MCU had a similar discussion when Captain America told Fury that helicarriers were like holding a gun at everyone on Earth and calling it protection. It wasn't freedom, but fear. And right, so the Inhuman Alicia is played by Alicia Vela Bailey, who served as Adrian Palicki's stunt double since Palicki joined the cast. Very cool. And, yeah, someone points out this episode takes place after the events of Age of Ultron. The post-it on Sam Koenig's mirror says, Call your sister, in all caps, with three exclamation points. So there's they're, they're multiplying at an alarming rate. There are at least four Koenigs. Three male and one female. That is, uh, yeah. And the portal stone left behind by the Kree was being held on shield carrier in room number 47. Marvel one-shot one shot item 47 is a Marvel one-shot film short about a Chitori weapon that was left behind in New York after the battle at the end of the Avengers. Sam and Billy Kane briefly referenced Call of Duty at the beginning of the episode when they mentioned spawn kills and black ops. Sam is seen sleeping in A New Hope Sheets. Sam is played by Patton Oswald, the narrator of Goldberg's, voicing the character of Adam, who sleeps in Star Wars Sheets. And... Let's see... The... Yeah. Um, I should be able to do an episode of the show tomorrow. So until then... You're really going to let Captain Ahab just waltz in there and have a fireside chat with Sky's mum.